There are a few things that we would describe as our personal kryptonite, things that will stop us in our tracks and prevent us from doing anything else. Among them, free pizza and a Law & Order SVU marathon. In fact, there's even an entire Twitter account dedicated to letting you know if SVU is on the biggest runner of marathons, USA, at any given time. But since the show has such a massive cast, we'll try to cover two characters in every section so we don't miss out on any any of your favorite characters. So without further ado, here are the best and worst characters in Law & Order SVU. Number 10, Stabler and Beck. Fans can agree that the introduction of Danny Beck to the show wasn't all confetti and good vibes. Beck is introduced in season eight at the request of the FBI to become Stabler's new partner. It was only temporary as Benson was in Oregon working in an eco-terrorist case. While Beck and Stabler became somewhat close during their partnership, fans could feel the tension. From the start, Beck isn't well-versed in sex crimes. She takes the job to heart to a point where it deeply wounds her and she moves on. She realizes she can't save every victim. Elliot and Beck had sexual tension so thick it could be cut with a knife. They do end up kissing when Elliot was in a rough patch during his marriage, though. Number 9, Benson and Amaro. Amaro was the new guy on the squad that many had to warm up to. Amaro also had to warm up to his new role as a detective in special victims. He was partnered with Benson after transferring from working warrants and narcotics. Amaro had a lot to learn and that's where Benson came in. But Amaro sometimes proved to be too much to handle and would let his anger get the best of him. Benson not only had to investigate the case but often kept Amaro in check like when Cassidy and Cragen were being wrongfully framed. In 25 Acts, Benson doesn't work with him stating she needed someone she can trust. They built a bridge and remain close. Number 8. Rollins and Amaro Rollins and Amaro's partnership is like a soap opera in some ways. They don't start off relatively well. Rollins already knows his temperament along with her own personal issues. Their partnership then takes a turn when they feed into their sexual tension and end up sleeping together. Their hidden relationship is even questioned by a murder suspect. The duo often disagreed on cases, but it was clear that they cared for one another on the job and personally. In the episode regarding AJ Martin and the domestic abuse case, Rollins goes too far at the bar while drunk and disagrees with the squad's verdict of trying him for spousal abuse. Number 7, Finn and Chester. Chester Lake was a new detective to the squad after transferring from Brooklyn's SVU unit. He gets partnered with Finn and they prove to be a pretty good match. Both are headstrong when catching a perp and looking for evidence. They're also not afraid of a bit of roughhousing. Finn understands Chester are much more than the other detectives. Both didn't have the best childhoods growing up and understand the struggles of the projects and the foster system. In season 9, Chester is suspected of murder and Stabler believes Finn tipped him off before taking him into custody. Number 6, Rollins and Benson. Rollins and Benson work as on-again, off-again partners, especially when Benson is promoted to lieutenant. They have a good understanding and relationship with each other. Benson, being her superior, sometimes causes her to put her foot down on what needs to be done in cases. Rollins also puts in her two cents on the matter that Benson often takes into consideration. But Rollins can also be a handful with her own personal demons like her gambling addiction that spiraled out of control in one episode. Both Rollins and Benson come to support each other in their personal lives when Rollins gets pregnant and Benson goes through the process of adoption. Number 5. Munch and Cassidy Munch and Cassidy were one of the show's earliest partners. They suited each other well despite the age difference. It might be due to their somewhat narcissistic attitudes or habit of making jokes. When investigating, they made a good team as both had no issues squeezing a perp for information. Munch also served to guide Cassidy in life and at work. He's been a detective for a lot longer and has seen how dark the world really is. One of their best moments together was when Cassidy can no longer stomach what happens to special victims and ask for a transfer. Munch is understanding and and gives him a hug farewell. Number four, Rollins and Carisi. This partner duo can easily be one of the more complex ones to appear on the show, but it's still a heartwarming one. Carisi and Rollins become incredibly close over their time as partners. Carisi comes in as a choir boy eager to do his job. They learn a lot about each other as both act at the other's voice of reason. At some point, there are some type of sexual tension between the two and Carisi and Rollins become more personally involved. Carisi was the first 
to realize that she might be pregnant and offering advice. Greasy takes on a father-type figure for her children. Their emotional tie to each other is plain to see, especially when Creasy wants to leave SVU to be an ADA. Number 3. Munch and Finn Finn and Munch are like two peas in a pod. They quickly became one of the more enjoyable partners in the series. Finn's tough attitude and Munch's conspiracies and witty humor became a fan favorite. But when they first meet, they get off to a rocky start as Finn saw crime as black and white. Over their time together, they come to greatly respect each other. Even when Munch is shot and in the hospital, Finn visits him and they share some comical words of wisdom and Munch gets a milkshake. Their moments together as partners are also emotional. When Finn gets invested in a case, Munch told him a story of his past partner who died from suicide. Number 2. Finn and Rollins Their partnership can best be described as big brother and little sister. Finn comes to really care for her well-being, but it's tested at times. When he learns of the mess she got into with gambling, he offers her money to get on her feet, but he's later hurt when she doesn't tell him about her sting operation. They mend their relationship, and Finn stands by her side when she reveals she was raped by her former superior officer. Finn is there to help bring him to justice for Rollins and his latest victim. Rollins and Finn have a good working relationship that spills over into their personal lives. Number 1. Stabler and Benson Stabler and Benson were the fan favorite from the very start. They were partners since the show's first season before Stabler left. Fans are still wondering why. Over the years, their partnership had its low points, mainly because of Stabler's anger issues that often put cases in jeopardy. Benson started to feel distrustful of Stabler and at one point wasn't his partner, which greatly wounded him. Throughout the show, their partnership is like a bad marriage. They spend countless nights together working, bickering, but also caring about each other's personal lives. Olivia was there to pick up the slack and take Elliot's wife to the doctors and then ended up rescuing her from a car crash. She was also his voice of reason when it came to his family. Now on to a couple characters fans can't help but hate. Number 2. Lonnie Briscoe Detective Briscoe has worked for the NYPD PD for over 30 years and is a decorated detective and former U.S. Corporal in the United States Army. Like many law and order detectives, Lenny Briscoe, Jerry Orpok, always puts the job first, even at the expense of his family. He's now a recovering alcoholic and attends AA meetings, but unfortunately, he got clean much too late to have a real relationship with any of his family members. Briscoe's daughter OD'd, and he spends much of his time blaming himself. Lenny Briscoe died in 2005 after retiring from the 27th precinct. Number 1. John Munch Now we know we've talked about Munch before, but we have to present both sides of the opinions, and the haters do make some good points. Detective John Munch, Richard Belzer, is your classic paranoid, misanthropic detective. He thrives off conspiracy theories, and a new ex-wife of his seems to pop up every other season. Munch is a huge advocate for the mentally ill, as several of his ex-wives and family members have suffered from mental disorders. He begins his career as a detective on homicide, life on the streets in the Baltimore Police Department homicide unit. He retires, takes his pension, and moves to New York to work in a sex crimes unit on Law & Order SVU. He takes the sergeant's exam on a bar bet and passes, earning him the title of Sergeant Munch, which he serves whenever Sergeant Cragen is off duty. He eventually retires, surrounded by all of his friends at SVU. And that's a wrap for this video. Who are your favorite characters from Law & Order SVU? Did we miss any? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Until next time.